Welcome to our training on contextual privacy. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, understand contextual privacy, and two, understand why and how privacy decisions may be adjusted based upon student circumstance. Over history, privacy was often defined as control over information about you with a distinction about private versus public information. But as the lines blur between private and public, there's a limit to what individuals can actually control. And a new theory of how to think about privacy was proposed by scholar Helen Niesenbaum. This theory is about how privacy changes depending on context. So think about it. What you want your doctor to know is quite different than you want your child or coworker to know. Information isn't just categorized as private or not private. The situation and the people who are sharing the information with matters. So in other words, some people may be comfortable sharing particular types of information with certain people, but not others, dependent on the context. So what we really want to be able to control is who knows what information about us. Teachers and schools know a ton of information about their students what grade they're in, their age, siblings that they might have in the school, interests, but there's still a lot about students that are not known. And as a result, we may end up making assumptions about them because there's often sensitive and personal information about them we don't know. And we might subconsciously project what we think is a typical student onto their living situation, family makeup, device and internet access, socioeconomic status, and more. And this brings us to edge cases. An edge case is a problem or situation that occurs only at an extreme. So another way to think about it is both sides of those bell curve. We think that edge cases are rare, but they can still be a lot more common than we think. So what are edge cases in a school and student context? Here are some examples of edge cases. Students with invisible disabilities, Students who identify as LGBTQIA and who have families that do not know due to fear of harm. Students who face abuse at home. Students who are undocumented themselves or with undocumented family members. Students who are experiencing homelessness and students with device or internet access issues. Again, we may think that these are very rare cases, but the incidence is much higher than people may assume, especially in the times of a pandemic. For example, according to research by the U.S. Department of Ed, 1.4 million or 1 in 16 children under 6 years old have experienced homelessness. Also, according to U.S. Ed Department data, 14% of children ages 3 to 18 are without home internet service. So for all of these listed and others, this is information so sensitive that students may not want anyone to know because of fear of backlash. So how can you still protect their privacy without knowing this information? In this series, Vulnerable Students, we will discuss the different edge cases or student circumstances listed and discuss key considerations and best practices in protecting their privacy. And we will get to how you can make sure you're being proactive and thinking about and protecting their privacy in these edge cases without students having to necessarily reveal this sensitive information to you. Now we would like you to complete a card sorting activity linked in this slide and provided in the link below. This is similar to previous card sorting activity in our first module where you categorize different types of data into how you would want it collected or shared. But in this activity, you're going to put yourself in the shoes of someone else. Thank you for joining this training.